hours a day. We review and debate every finding compared to existing science and literature, weighing the risks and benefits of every intervention, its timing, as, any, as well as any potential impacts a delay may have. Over the course of his illness, the President has experienced two episodes of transient drops in his oxygen saturation. We debated the reasons for this and whether we'd even intervene. It was a determination of the team, based predominantly on the timeline from the initial diagnosis, that we initiate dexamethasone. I'd like to take this opportunity now, given some speculation over the course of the illness, uh, the last couple of days, uh, update you on the course of his, his own illness. Thursday night into Friday morning when I left the bedside, the President was doing well, with only mild symptoms, and his oxygen was in the high 90s. Late Friday morning when I returned to the bedside, the President had a high fever, and his oxy oxygen saturation was transiently dipping below 94%. Given these two developments, I was concerned for possible rapid progression of the illness. I recommended the President we try some supplemental oxygen, see how he'd respond. He was fairly adamant that he didn't need it. He was not short of breath. He was tired, had the fever, and that was about it. And after about a minute, on only two liters, his saturation levels were back over, 40, over 95%. He stayed on that for about an hour, maybe, and it was off and gone. Later that day, by the time the team here was at the bedside, the president had been up out of bed, moving about the residence with only mild symptoms. Despite this, everyone agreed the best course of action was to move to Walter Reed for a more thorough evaluation and monitoring. Now I'd like to invite up Dr. Dooley to discuss the current plan. Thank you, Dr. Conley. Um, before I begin a, a brief clinical update on the President's condition, I do want to reiterate my comments from yesterday regarding the, uh, how proud I am to be a part of this multidisciplinary, multi-institutional team of uh, clinical professionals behind me and what an honor it is to care for the President uh, here at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Regarding his clinical status, the patient uh, continues to improve. Uh, he has remained without fever uh, since Friday morning. His vital signs are stable. Uh, from a pulmonary standpoint, he remains on room air this morning uh, and is not complaining of shortness of breath or other significant respiratory symptoms. He's ambulating uh, himself, walking around the White House Medical Unit without uh, limitation or disability. Our continued monitoring of his cardiac, uh, liver, and kidney function uh, demonstrates continued normal findings or improving findings. Um, so, and I'll, I'll now turn it over to, uh, to Dr. Garibaldi uh, from Johns Hopkins to talk about our therapeutics and again, our plan for the day. Thank you, Dr. Julian. I just wanted to, again, reiterate what an honor and a privilege it is to take care of the President, but to be part of such a talented and multidisciplinary team here at, at Walter Reed. Uh, the President yesterday evening completed his second dose of remdesivir. Uh, he's tolerated that infusion well. We've been monitoring for any potential side effects, uh, and he has had none that we can tell. His liver and kidney function have remained normal, um, and we continue uh, to plan to use a five-day course of remdesivir. In response to transient uh, low oxygen levels, as Dr. Conley has discussed, we did initiate dexamethasone therapy, and he received his first dose of that yesterday, and our plan is to continue that for the time being. Um, today, he feels well. He's been up and around. Our plan for today is to have him to eat and drink, uh, be up out of bed as much as possible to be mobile, and if he continues to look and, and feel as well as he does today, our hope is that we can plan for a discharge as early as tomorrow to the White House where he can continue his treatment course. Thank you very much, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Connolly for any questions. Dr. Connolly? Just a moment, please. The President wanted me to share how proud he is of the group, what an honor it is for him to be receiving his care here at Walter Reed, surrounded by such incredible talent, academic leaders, department chairs, internationally renowned researchers and clinicians, including the support of Dr. Garibaldi from Johns Hopkins. Um, I'd like to reiterate how pleased we all are with the President's recovery. And with that, I'll take your question. Thank you Dr. So Conley. Dr. Conley, you said that there were two instances where he had drops in oxygen. Can you walk us through the second one? And also, I've got a question for the lung specialist afterwards. Sure. Yeah, yeah yesterday, uh, there was another episode 
where he dropped down about 93%. Um, he doesn't ever feel short of breath. Uh, we watched it, um, and it, it returned back up. Um, as I said, we, we evaluate all of these, and given the timeline where he is in the, the course of illness, you know, we, we are trying to maximize everything uh, that we could do for him, and we debated whether we'd even start it, uh, the dexamethasone, and we decided that uh, in this case, the potential benefits early on the course probably outweighed any risks at this time. Did, did you give him a second round of supplemental oxygen yesterday? Uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to check with the nursing staff. Uh, um, I don't think that if he did, it was very, very limited, uh, but it's not on oxygen. Um, and and the only oxygen that, that I ordered or that we provided was uh, that Friday morning initially. And about what time was that yesterday? Uh, yesterday, what was yesterday? You said the second instance? Second in incidence? Oh, it was over the course of the day, yeah. Yesterday morning. Dr. Conley. Dr. Conley. Dr. Conley. The president's current uh, blood oxygen level. That's my first question to you, Dr. Conley. 98%. And, and what, what do the uh, x-rays and CT scans show are there signs of pneumonia are there signs of lung involvement uh, or any damage to the lungs yeah so we're tracking all of that um, there's some expected findings but nothing of uh, any major clinical concern then why start him dr conley on the concern. Concern. dr conley why st ask if his oxygen level ever dipped below 90. Uh, we don't have any recordings here of that. Okay. That's right. The on the dextromethasone, Dr. Yeah, what about here? What at the White the House, House or here, anything below 90, just to follow up on her question? Uh, no, it was below 94%. It, was, it wasn't down in the low 80s or anything. No. So, okay. So on the dextromethasone, the, the, yeah. the steroids, sir, Yesterday on the lung function? you told us that the president was in great shape, had been in good shape and fever-free for the previous 24 hours. Minutes after your press conference, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows told reporters that the president's vitals were very concerning over the past 24 hours. Simple question for the American people. Whose statements about the president's health should be believed? So uh, the chief and I work side by side, and uh, I think his statement was misconstrued. What he meant was that uh, 24 hours ago, when uh, he and I were, were checking on the president, that there was that momentary episode of the high fever and, and that temporary drop uh, in the saturation, which prompted us to act uh, you know, expediently to move him up here. Fortunately, that was really a very transient limited episode. Uh, a couple hours later, he was back up, uh, mild again. Um, you know, we could, I'm not going to speculate what that, uh, that limited episode was about so early in the course, but uh, he's doing well. What are the expected findings on his lungs, and why is the president not wearing a mask in the videos and photos that have been released? Well, the, the president uh, wears a mask anytime he's, he's around us, and we're all wearing our uh, N95s, uh, full PPE. Um, He's, he's the patient, and when we can, uh, when he'll move out into uh, to public, we move him about, out and around other people that aren't in full PPE. Uh, I assure you, he'll, uh, as long as he's uh, still under my care, uh, we'll talk about him wearing a mask. And he's in a negative pressure room? And the room is negative pressure? Uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics of uh, his care. And can you answer the questions around the lung function? The lung function question, Dr. Conley? I'm sorry? The lung function question. Can you talk about that and what these uh, expected findings? I would just share that, uh, like every patient, we perform lung in, uh, spirometry on him, and uh, he's maxing it out. We told him, uh, see what you can do, and it's over 2,500 uh, milliliters each time. Um, he's, he's doing great. Yeah. But are your scans showing any irregularities in his lungs? So are there any obesities? Is there anything? To disclose that the president had been administered oxygen. Uh, it's a good question. Thank so, you. I was trying to reflect the the, uh, the upbeat attitude that the team, the president, that his course of illness has had. Um, I didn't want to give uh, any uh, any information that might uh, steer the uh, the course of illness in another direction. Um, and in doing so, uh, you know, it came off uh, that we were trying to hide something, which wasn't necessarily true. Um, and uh, so have, here I have it. He's, he is, the, the fact of the matter is, is that he's doing really well. Uh, he is, he is uh, responding, and as the team said, uh, if everything continues to go well, we're going to start uh, discharge planning back to the White House. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, folks. Dr. Conley, on his lung scans. You're, this is, again, you did this yesterday. Can you please explain what you found on his lung scans? Hey, Chief, you want to chat?